everyone. How are you? Ready to hear the story of one of the world's greatest living photographers? Yes, please. One of my favorite things is to activate my camera and upload all the amazing information to my database. Great! Get ready to be carried away into Sebastião Salgado's journey around the world. Who is Sebastião Salgado? Why do we need to know about him? Sebastião Salgado is a Brazilian photographer who has registered some of the world's bloodiest conflicts and been accredited with many awards for his work. Salgado has always been very sensitive to the socio-economic condition that impacts human beings and has always had a deep love and respect for nature. When and where was Salgado born? Salgado was born in 1944 in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. He lived on a farm surrounded by acres of luxurious tropical forest. He studied economics at Sao Paulo University, but soon after his degree he was exiled from Brazil after he joined a movement against Brazil's military government. He fled to France. So he didn't always want to be a photographer? It wasn't a childhood dream. No, that wasn't his first plan. It was whilst he was on an assignment in Rwanda as an economist for the International Coffee Organization that he took his first photographs. It was then that something clicked in him. Sebastial dared to listen to his gut feeling and left his job at the time to try and make a life out of photography. He realized that with his camera he could communicate with images. The photography is a language that didn't need translation. In 1973, he became a freelance photojournalist. What were the main things he photographed? Sebastiao has travelled in over 120 countries for his projects, devoting himself almost entirely to long-term projects that told a story through a series of images. It took him six years, between 1986 and 1992, to put together his first collection in a book called Workers. He started photographing men at work in the lowest and hardest conditions. His work showed solidarity with the world's poorest societies. From men in sulphur ores with bare hands to the workers in Brazil's largest and most dangerous mines, his images are an intimate journey to describe the real labour force responsible for changing the world. It is a sad story which reveals the unwavering spirit of the poor workers, despite not having better options for survival. This is a story of resilience and labour, which despite it all passes a message of hope and endurance. The second project is collected in a book called Migration, which will later be re-released under the title of Exodus. It focused on people forced to leave their homeland for different reasons because of their religion or ideological aspiration, to escape a war conflict or to search for a better future and economic opportunities. Six years, that is the amount of time Sebastial spent capturing the situation the refugees were living in. He documented the story of the migration of humans who had to suffer great physical and psychological hardship. Salgado's photography frames sprawling camps and roadside refugees it zooms in on faces ravaged by violence, hunger, depression, greed and hatred. Yet, somehow, it still shows hope for better times ahead, compassion and dignity, even under their terrible circumstances. These pictures are an overwhelming testimony of what these people endured but I am sure it wasn't easy to take the pictures of such horrifying conditions. Absolutely. This experience left him physically and emotionally drained. Remembering his last project, he said, I was sick. I was not well. I had lost faith on our species. We are too violent. His immune system, compromised by stress, gave way, and he came down with a series of infections. His doctor told Salgado that his body was dying and urged him to take a break. Heeding the advice, Salgado, accompanied by his wife, Leila Wanik Salgado, returned to his parents' farm in Brazil, which he had inherited. He decided to stop photography. His soul and body were sick. 
but so was his land. There was not much left of what he could remember as a kid. During his childhood, the land had been verdant and lush, with 60% covered by the tropical rainforest. But over the years, it had been destroyed by deforestation and drought, reducing the amount of forests to less than 0.5%. It was the example of a man-made catastrophe, men who destroyed to build. Nature was very important for Salgado throughout his life, as we can see looking at his pictures which are taken nearly entirely in the rural world, not the urban one. His wife Layla suggested they replant the rainforest, which is what they did, planting hundreds and thousands of trees native to the region. Such was the success of the undertaking, the land became a national park and the Salgados formed the Instituto Terra, dedicated to promoting the reforestation and conservation of forest land. It was thanks to this project that Salgado decided to return to photography. The regeneration of the land and his career proceeded in tandem, but this time he focused his camera not on humanity, towards which he had lost faith, but rather on the planet which he feels confident will endure. His new project was named Genesis. An epic eight-year expedition brought him to the most remote regions of the planet. He went to the Himalayas, Siberia, Argentina, the Galapagos Islands, Central Africa, the Amazon forest, and many other places. There he discovered the mountains seen from a bird's eye view, explored deserts, broad river deltas and oceans. Salgado's images aim to be a means of communication among nations, to let people know how beautiful our planet is and how important it is to preserve it. He frames the lives of indigenous people who are capable of reminding us that we too are part of nature and are able to live with it in harmony. In his latest project Amazonia, he pictures the alive side of the forest, the one that must stay there forever. Amazonian images are an appeal for the need to protect this ecosystem, the one we haven't destroyed yet. As Salgado says, we must be smart enough to survive in this world. He really does use his work and passion to spread strong messages and awareness, but how does Salgado create his photographs? It takes time. It took him time to connect with the people he was taking pictures of spending weeks to understand them and see their story unfolding, always showing compassion and respect towards them. It took him time to take the right shot. He had to be patient and wait for the right composition and the right moment to arrive. He only uses black and white. He states that he feels a color photograph both detracts and distracts from the subject. What technique makes Salgado's photos so visually unique? The deep sensitivity towards what happens around him enables Salgado to find the right subject and catch its essence, giving a soul to his pictures. The urgency to tell a story and make an impact on people does the rest. His images are meant to provoke discussion and change, to the point that many people describe him as an activist with a camera.